But the reality, even more so, is this stuff is simple. It's just simple words that are said repetitive enough times to where you get positive results and you stop saying things that don't work and you only say things that do work. Mm -hmm. But I would love if you would, hypothetically, you're calling an internet leader a final expense lead. What is, how, what's your first 30 to 60 seconds? And I think that's where people right now go, all right, I'm gonna pause this, I'm going to get a pen out and I'm gonna hand write everything that Ryan says because this clearly produces 83 family a month results and I'm not getting that. If I just say Ryan's words and work as hard as Ryan does, I could get Ryan's results. All right, Grady Poulsen here, Family First Live America. So excited to have Ryan and Morgan on again. Uh, Ryan Manrique, ex-loan originator and now 83 <laughs> family a month protector. Morgan Rose now also was a mortgage loan officer. See, I'm yeah. trying to use the different well, terms, yeah. right? No, you did good. That was perfect. <laughs> mortgage loan officer protected 30 events. Their agency protects nearly 400 families per month. And we're going to talk about some sales, uh, things that maybe you've learned in the mortgage industry of how to take control or, you know, whatever, you know, tactics. And I don't want to use that word like we're trying to manipulate, but like, you know, you're trying to help people make decisions to improve their lives. That's what sales is. Sales is I help people make decisions to improve their lives. Is Betty going to be better off and her daughter Janine better off if she has some insurance to make sure that Janine doesn't have a big bill when that day comes for Betty? Yes. Right, and that's what we do here. We put things in place and help families relieve stress because on that worst day in any family's life, we're the only ones that show up with something positive. That's what we do here. So we help people make decisions to navigate through that. But Brian's a tremendous producer. Morgan's a tremendous producer. I'd love if you'd, you know, you guys are 100% virtual. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been in a home? I never have. Never, and that's, okay. I mean, that's, that's the beauty of, of insurance sales in this new economy is that the world at which I grew up in, in the world of in-person, door-to-door, uh, drive around all day long, did fantastically well, belly-to-belly -belly sales, is now being expedited with the onset of virtual. Now, Ryan is a, uh, and Morgan are accredited virtual producers because they've been through the school of hard knocks and learn how to navigate tonality and taking control and clearing the calendar and go get a pen and all the things that you need to be done. But for you as a new producer, you can ascend to the levels of which they will communicate through repetition, right? Dow 14 leads, call, agent calls me up, goes, this isn't working, no one wants to buy. I'm like, listen, dude, you're, four, you're 14 dials in, man. It's gonna, <laughs> you got a few more to, to, to hammer away as you start to kind of get some experience to chip away what you don't know and only leaving what you need to know. So I'd love it if you guys would kind of go through, you know, your sales process, maybe, maybe we'd start with, you know, what leads you like to work up until like phone script, like how we're taking control and all the way kind of through that and for you want to work together or however you want to do it. But I just, you guys do such good at getting agents up and running as well as producing on your own. Um, we're all in for a treat right now. So Ryan is a final expense king and I like the IU well, so we balance each other out well. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, we have a sales script that we use that, that I, you know, I've been doing this for long enough now to where I pretty much have it memorized, but I still use it on every single call to a T. So I'll okay. have it right in front of me. Um, I think, and it's interesting because I've trained some people on it and they didn't find as much success as I did using the exact same script. And so I think it really comes down to delivery um, and making sure that you aren't like tweaking the verbiage, that you're using the right verbiage, right? And, and like you were saying, you know, it's all about leading, leading the conversation. So I like to use verbiage when I transition. Uh, and I like to say things like, hey, um, you know, let's go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and, and fill out this application real quick. It's only going to take about five minutes, Okay. right? I will never ask a customer, hey, so are you ready to fill out an application? right? That's not the right question to ask. It's always assertive and it's always, hey, this is, here's what we're going to do, right? Or when I ask for the banking, I don't ask for it. I say, hey, go ahead and uh, grab a check real quick. I have a routing number right here. I'm going to go ahead and read this off to you. I want you to verify it as I read it to you. Okay. They grab the routing number, or I mean, sorry, they grab their, uh, their checkbook and now they have the account number right there. So I read it off and it actually builds credibi some credibility too, right? Because I say, hey, I've got the the bank, in, you know, in my system right here with the sure. routing number, and so then they have that checking account number, and I'll say, okay, go ahead with the account number whenever you're ready. Okay. Boom. So. And to touch on kind of what he was saying before, I think there's should be more of a conversation on kind of what not to do, which okay. is you know what he was kind of you know going over in a way. But what I've noticed, especially about 
uh, new agents is there's two main mistakes that they make. The first one being that they make a friend before they make an actual client, right? They don't lead as a professional. They're talking too much as a friend prior to the pitch, right? You can make a friend in the application because they already picked a program. But if you're, you know, chatting with them about a million and one things, now they're going to be more comfortable giving you an objection when you actually ask them what program they want to choose. So that would, I would say is the, is the first main mistake that I see new agents make because naturally they're nervous. They feel like they're going to have a better shot if they're really nice and they really like you. But you can kind of shoot yourself in the foot with that because now when you say, okay, you know, which program, you know, what do you want to leave behind to your family? Now they feel comfortable saying, oh, you know, I need to think about it, Grady. I need to talk to my husband, you know, the old ball and chain. Like it's it's too easy for them to say no. And I that was one thing I saw a call you did with Caitlin Blackburn and I realized I was making that mistake and it changed a lot for me. Um, second thing is asking, you know, to giving too many options as far as, you know, would that be comfortable for you? Is that something that you would like to do? Do you have time for the application? Do you have a pen and paper? All of these questions that make you lose control within that conversation is a huge one for new agents as well. And like he said, you can take the same script and just not take control of the call and you're not going to have the same success as someone like Ryan, who's like, all right, so, you know, those top two programs seem to be a little uncomfortable. We can always start with this bottom one. I'm going to go ahead and fill out the application. It only takes five minutes. We should know immediately if you're approved. At no point is he letting the client interject and, you know, say this is too expensive, this and that, because you're leading them with, to the what the next step is. And I think those are the two main components that new agents struggle with, with doing. I'd also like to add something, too. So I go into every single call assuming and speaking to the customer as if they want the policy because you have to think these people uh, we work internet leads right so people go online and they fill something out for an insurance quote for insurance right so i go into every call just assuming that they want it and i speak to them that way and the ones who really do great now i make a sale right because i'm confident and i provide expertise um, and the ones who maybe don't and and i can't you know persuade them into it or, or they're just you know, for whatever reason, I don't make the sale. It is what it is. But if you if you approach every call that way, you're going to consist. You're going to be consistent. It's like a mindset of of anything, right? If you go into a test or you go into uh, you know a workout, I'm going to hurt myself on this workout, right? All of a sudden, you're just cautious and you end up tweaking your neck or something. If you go in anything with an attitude of I'm going to do this, I'm going to accomplish this, I'm going to be good at this, I can figure this out, right? It's just it's tricking your mind. I mean, tricking your mind, telling yourself that you're going to be solution orientated versus being they're not going to want to buy. The lead's going to be broke. Uh, they're going to be sick. They're going to have some sort of disease where I can't cover. Like if you talk to yourself that way, you're going to all of a sudden go. They're taking this medication I've never heard of. I Google it. I couldn't find it. Oh, they have some rare form of cancer from Indonesia that I've never heard of before, so we couldn't get them covered. Versus just like saying, okay, let's just proceed and let the uh, let the underwriter tell us if we can get them approved or not. Right. All right. Let's just push through. So um, that was awesome. Okay. Let me, I, I always love to get the specific words. So let's pretend, I don't know if you want to role play. I do a terrible job of role playing and, you know, but I would like. Well, now I really want you to do it. Oh, I, no, I, I, the problem is I just start laughing or I make jokes that I try to like think of something funny when the reality is this is very important stuff. But the reality even more so is this stuff is simple. It's just simple words that are said repetitive enough times to where you get positive results and you stop saying things that don't work and you only say things that do work. Mm -hmm. But I would love if you would, hypothetically, you're calling an internet leader a final expense lead. What is... How, what's your first 30 to 60 seconds? And I think that's where people right now go, all right, I'm going to pause this. I'm going to get a pen out and I'm going to hand write everything that Ryan says because this clearly produces 83 family a month results. And I'm not getting that because most aren't because most don't work as hard as Ryan does. And if I just say Ryan's words and work as hard as Ryan does, I could get Ryan's results. But some of you won't pause this and get a pen. And that's why you are where you are. And so but that's where Ryan is where he is, right? So this is, this is life tips. Some of you are going to pause it and get a pen. All right. So, Ryan, what do you say in the first 30, 60, 90 seconds to completely take control and put the client where you want them to be? All right, so we role playing? Let's do it. All, All right. right, so. <laughs> I'm in, Morgan. <laughs> Wait, I'm so who's going to be the customer? I'll be the Grady. customer. Grady, All right. Yes. Hi, Grady? Yes. Hey, Grady, this is Ryan. Just giving you a call back. It looks like you submitted a request here for some information on the state uh, funeral and final expense 
uh, coverage programs. It looks like you put your beneficiary here as Morgan Rose now. Is that correct? That is correct. Yes. Who are you again? Okay, great. Well, just so my name is Ryan. I'm, I'm licensed. I'm a licensed broker here with the state of Arizona. Um, so just go ahead and grab a pen and paper real quick. I'm going to get that information out to you. Okay. What information was it again? Uh, it was the information on the final expense programs that you uh, requested. Okay. So just go ahead and grab that pen and paper. Let me know when you're ready. All right. I'm ready. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to have you write down my information. Um, I am the licensed local state advisor. My name is Ryan. Spell that for you. R-Y-A-N. Last name is Manrique, which is M-A-N-R-I-Q-U-E. I'm going to give you my NPN. This is my national producer number. Why do I need this? Um, because this, this way you can look me up online and see that I am a licensed broker here with the state. Okay. So it's 202 -161 -18. Okay. okay, and the state just requires me to leave that information with you. So real quick, Grady, I'm going to go ahead and ask you just a few questions. Um, like I said, I am licensed with the state. I work with all the major carriers in the state. So this is going to tell us which companies will approve you. Um, and then we'll see which one is going to give you the best price for the coverage. Okay, so do you smoke any tobacco products? No. No tobacco products? All right. And you want me to go into all the medical questions? Yeah, I mean, just well, okay. You, yeah, or skip off to the, the top of my head you, here. Just, <laughs> okay. Uh, skip to the part where you where you where you take control. All right. So we've gone through the medical questions. Um, so now I'm going to go ahead and run a quote. Okay. Okay. So then I pull up um, my you know my three options. I have them before I have them write those down. I say okay. So next I'm going to go ahead and just explain how this product works. Uh, this is going to be what's called a whole life final expense plan. And this is going to cover all of your funeral and final expenses in the event that you pass away. That way you're not leaving those uh, that burden to, you know, Morgan here. Okay. Um, so this plan will never expire. It'll last your entire life. So if we do get you approved, you never have to worry about this again. Okay. We also have a, uh, where this product also builds a cash value over time. So eventually what can happen is you build enough cash value to where you can stop making the payments on this and you'll still have the coverage for life. Wow. Okay. Thirdly, it has something called living benefits. Okay. And this is where if you ever get really, really sick or badly injured and you end up in the hospital, um, this plan can pay out a portion up to a hundred percent of the funds to Morgan while you're still alive. Okay. okay? So go ahead and grab that pen and paper again, Grady. I'm just going to go ahead and give you these options. So I have option number one here. Okay. This option is going, this will be 40,000 in coverage, and this would cover the cost of your burial, which right now on average is probably around 15,000. And then that would leave around 25,000 for Morgan for things like, you know, if she needs any travel expenses, medical bills, household bills, whatever she might need it for. Okay. And maybe leave her a small inheritance as well. So that option, go ahead and write down 150 a month. Okay, I have a second option as well. This option is going to be for 30,000, which again would cover the burial and leave Morgan with around 15 for any other final expenses. Go ahead and put down 120 a month next to that option. And then I have a third option as well. This is going to be for 20,000. This would cover the burial and then still leave a little bit around 5,000 for Morgan. Go ahead and put down 100 per month. Okay. I don't make the final decision on this, Grady. Unfortunately, the insurance company uh, does that. So we would have to submit an application to see if we can get you approved. But if we were able to approve you, would you want to leave um, Morgan with the 40,000, the 30,000 or the 20,000? I mean, I want to leave her the 40. I just don't know if I can... If I can swing that every month. Well, here, um, here's what I would suggest then, Grady, okay? Because I don't want to break the bank. I want to make sure this is something that's affordable, but also takes care of what you need. So let's, instead of the 40000 let's start with the thirty. Okay. So we'll go ahead and submit an application and at least see if we can get you approved for the thirty. And then if a month from now, if you decide, hey, you know what, Ryan, I really want the forty, just give me a call back. We'll go ahead and apply for another 10000 in coverage, okay? So go ahead and do me a favor. Spell your legal first and last name. I'm going to pull that up now for you. You can tell he's done that a couple times, huh? <laughs> no script or nothing. <laughs> Thank you. That was worth the, uh, the cost of admission. But um, <laughs> that was awesome, man. Um, control, what we're going to do, if you were approved. I mean, just so many leading words, but also clarifying that you don't make the decision. I'd approve everybody if I could, but they don't allow me to do that Like type of mentality, which puts you in the position of we're on the same team. Like mm -hmm. We're working on this together. You have a goal to protect Morgan. And you want to leave some money and however much money you want to leave her, but we also don't want to break the bank. There's so much con control in there. Um, now,
they, do you do you do anything inside of the medical questions, or do you do you create any doubt, or do you? Yeah. Oh, oh you've got the you you take uh, uh, you take uh, a torvastatin. Uh, uh, we'll see if they'll approve you. Like, do you ever do any stuff like that? It just depends. I mean, if they, I, I use the cheat sheets on every call too still, and I know a lot of it by heart now, but you know, I'll, I'll check. And if there's something where I see they're going to get downgraded to a graded, um, policy, then I'll let them know like, Hey, you're probably not going to get cut, you know, approved for immediate coverage. It's going to be this, but, uh, which, you know, so I'm going to quote you on like probably worst case scenario, but I may be able to get it for you a little bit cheaper. Okay. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, we're going to have to submit an application. That's the only way we're going to find out. Okay. Anything you want to add to that? Anything you do? Anything? Uh, yeah. Just a couple quick notes because it's something that wouldn't come to mind for anyone who's newer to the phones or maybe not having the same success and feels like they're saying the same thing. Because this is a lot of times what we see with agents are like, I'm saying, I'm using the script. I'm saying the same things. I'm not having success. A couple of things. A lot of people will pause after those options and let the client speak. You don't want to do that. You want them to choose an option. And even if they keep talking, because he kind of cut you off, right? Yeah. Which you kind of have to do that. It feels rude, but you don't want them to talk themselves out of it. And when you're just sitting there like, after they choose a plan, okay, I don't know if I can get you approved. Like you can't have these big pauses in between and that goes for the intro script as well. Um, you know, once you, you only want to pause two places when you, after you verify the information, right? That gives you credibility. You want them to say yes. And then, um, in the intro, the only other place you want to pause is after you ask them to grab a pen and paper. If you're pausing at any other points, it gives them an opportunity to interject, say, I'm busy, I'm this, I'm that. So making sure that you're kind of not letting them talk in places where they're going to talk themselves out of it or make excuses is really important as well to maintain that control. It works the same way with uh, like rebuttals. If you have somebody that, that gives you an objection and then you just answer their question and you pause right after that, guess what's coming two seconds later? Another objection or another question, right? So you have to always be taking control. And if, you know, if they, if they throw something at you, you just answer it, but then you immediately pivot into the next part of your script and you keep talking. So that's, that's, that's awesome. what I do. That's awesome. That's, that's, I mean, cause I, I need, I, I want to get to the 40,000, but maybe we could try to save over 30 and I'll ask my kids if they want to pitch. Like I'm just, oh, now talk, I need to think about it. Now I need to think, well, I got to yeah. call my kid and see if he wants to pitch another 30 a month mm -hmm. to make yeah. sure that mom gets money. No, no, no. Just, okay, let's do the 30 and then let's just, you can talk to your kid whenever you want. But right. so, right. Good. okay. So I want to, to, to close this out. What do you say to close? Right. So the opens is important, right? Now you've got it submitted. Approved, not approved, you tell them, don't tell them. What do you say at the last 30 seconds to solidify yourself as their broker, client agent for life? I mean, what are the things, what are the words you use to make sure that if they've got a question, they're calling you, they're not taking other calls from other agents, um, just, sell, sell, you know, putting your, increasing your credibility? So I actually stole my closing script from one of my agents. Uh, Great. You know, the <laughs> they're becoming the teacher in this instance, but yes. it's working really, really well. Because what you guys have to understand, whether you're buying exclusive leads, age leads, if they're seeing your ad, they're seeing other ads. And they're probably filling it out, right? Because the person that's in that age range and that, you know, with those hobbies, those interests, they're getting targeted by other marketers. So someone else is going to call them at some point. And it doesn't matter if you're doing the marketing yourself, anything like that. You just want to expect that someone else will call them. So you want to address it, right? You don't want to get off the call. It's like, okay, you're going to get your policy packet by, you know, you, you want to address it up front. Hey, you're probably going to get some calls from some other agents. Just let them know that, you know, Morgan took care of you today. I'm going to um, send you up a follow-up email with, you know, your policy number, your premium, your effective date, you know, all of these things. And I also, this is what I stole from my agent. I'll um, ask them, Hey, to avoid some of those calls, would you like me to play ECO on the do not call registry? And then you can go place them on the do not call registry for them. You obviously, you know, get their authorization so you can't call them. <laughs> second thing <laughs> is going to be genius. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> wow. And second thing is just going to be, um, you know, addressing. So if someone else is trying to talk you into an application, I did get you set up with the best plan that you could qualify for in the state. If you go putting in additional insurance applications, it's kind of like if you're trying to apply for a bunch of credit cards, they're going to start declining you and maybe even taking this app, you know, approval back because of the fact that if you're going and applying for a bunch of insurance, it looks suspicious. Sounds so true. don't go be putting in any other applications with any other agents because we want to make sure we protect this policy. That way, yeah. if someone's trying to sell them into, oh, I'm going to get you a different policy, they're like, no, 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 no. You know, I don't want to, Correct. I don't want to mess up my, my plan, which is actually true. Yeah. So, yeah. And you can also say, add to that, like say, make sure you call me first, right? I'm, I'm your guy. So as long as you've built that relationship too, 
and have them write down all your information and save it, then, you know, then you can really solidify your business. Yeah. I mean, when I'm, when I'm looking for a new mattress, I'm going to go lay on more than one, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to go check out different mattress stores. I might even order some of the ones that mail into my house that I get a hundred day free night's sleep. When I'm, when, <laughs> when people are looking for, I mean, I have a big stack of beds in the hallway. Um, <laughs> Is that Every, real? <laughs> you can order them. All. Yeah, yeah. Like purple, sat. I've, I've, we've been through some beds, but um, you got one that like goes. It doesn't matter. Um, but the reality though is, is just like you said, the clients they're they're looking to right. They want to make now. When we use words like we're a broker, we're licensed in the state, multiple states. You know, I'm shopping the best options. Those are those are clarifying things that like we're doing our best to put you in a good position. And based on your health, this is the best option you can qualify for, right? That doesn't mean they're not going to get other calls from people. And right. that's how you elevate yourself, especially in an internet lead based business where we're not going belly to belly and eating pie and drinking tea and hugging them on the way out and building that even deeper rapport. We want to make sure that we're selling, we're solidifying our position within their household as their go-to person. Now I got Morgan. She took care of me. We had a great conversation after while we were putting the application, I learned all about her puppies or whatever. You guys have yeah. any animals? Oh Yeah. Two cats. And <laughs> you got a cats. whole zoo. Learned out about her two cats. You know, I mean, like they, when you build that, you build a report in the app, right? Um, that's where you set yourself up and eliminate someone coming behind you and trying to, you know, sell Betty for a $2 cheaper policy. And, you know, Betty, you're going to save $24 a year. Um, you know, isn't that matter? Isn't that important? Well, yeah, I mean, but I also like, I don't know if I want to deal with this anymore. I had such a good conversation with Morgan. She took care of me. Like, that's how you're going to elevate yourself in this world because, you know, as Ryan alluded to, people are putting this, their information in, but leads are people who love their families more than most other people because they don't know enough about insurance that they are waiting for strangers to contact them to talk about how to protect their loved ones. That's a pretty crazy idea. And that's really why our company is exceeding and, and excelling is because instead of, hey, Ryan, go make a list of your top friends, family, work associates. I'm going to call your brother, sell him insurance. You can watch me sell him. I'm going to keep the commission, but call your training. That's why we don't do that here because we equip you to actually be a business owner where you actually buy leads. And to see what you guys just kind of dialed in today, I mean, tremendous. Thank you guys.